A few days ago, I put a video out asking the question, is Jesus really coming back soon? And in that video, I explained very carefully that Jesus is absolutely coming back but we cannot say he's coming soon. I mean, we can say it because we believe it. I personally believe he is coming soon. But the Bible teaches that no man knows the day nor the hour. So that sums up basically what that video was all about. You can go back and watch that. But this video, I want to pick up from that thought of we don't know when and then move more into we know that he's coming again, without a doubt. Jesus is coming again. The Bible is very clear on that subject. In fact, the Bible says in Thessalonians, he says, The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And there we shall ever be with the Lord. Isn't that a great passage of scripture? You need to look that up and, and, and study over it. Now, let me share with you what he's talking about in this passage. He's talking about a definite time in the future that Jesus is going to be commissioned by the Father to go get his church. And Jesus is going to come back. Now, when he comes, he we can't get this mixed up with the second coming because we're not talking about the second coming now. We're talking about the rapture of the church. The first coming was when Jesus came and was born of a virgin, laid in a manger. It was the very first beginning of the whole mission of God on earth, Jesus in the flesh. I want you to notice this thought right quick. Before Jesus was born of a virgin, there was the pre-existent Jesus Christ. We call him the Word. The Bible calls him the Word. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And so the point is, before he was born of a virgin, he already was. That he is God, and now he's born of a virgin, stepped into humanity, and now he is a man, but yet still God. And so he says, you can't be man and God at the same time. Jesus Christ, he is 100% man. He is 100% God. And people say, oh, no, you can't do that. You talk to God about it. But in the Bible, he clearly teaches that to be true. And so he was born of a virgin. That was his first coming and he raised up among men there he lived among men and then when he was 30 years old he started his earthly ministry was baptized and there when he was baptized the the uh, Holy Spirit came upon him like a dove and lit upon him. And a voice out of the cloud said, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. And that was the Father verifying the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the incarnate Christ in man. And Jesus started his earthly ministry and for three and a half years. Jesus taught his disciples, went with all of his disciples and taught them as he went along until the day he was betrayed by a kiss of Judas and he was taken, he was tried, and he was put to death on a cross, and he died there. Do you know that whole experience, that whole event there was prophesied over and over and over again, hundreds of years before, and then Jesus comes and he fulfills all those prophecies? The next thing on the prophecy calendar is Jesus is coming in the rapture of the church. Many people don't believe in the rapture, and that's fine. You don't have to believe it if you want to. Just put your faith in Jesus Christ, and he'll show you the rapture when he comes. But what happens is there is the first coming, there is the second coming, but then in between the first coming and second coming is what we call the rapture of the church. And the reason when he comes then that we don't call that one the second coming is because he doesn't touch his feet on the earth. Rather, he hovers in the sky. The Lord himself shall ascend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, listen, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And in that moment, when Jesus calls us up, those who have already died, who were Christians, they will be resurrected out of their grave. The dead in Christ shall rise first. That means the Christians who have passed away are in their graves. Paul is writing this, inspired by the Spirit, to comfort the Christians to, who are still alive, who are telling them that those Christians that they loved and they were put to death for the faith or they died of natural causes and they're dead... They won't be left behind if Jesus comes back after they've already died. And so he says, the dead in Christ will rise first. And then it says, and we who are alive and remain, meaning everybody who is a believer who is on the earth today, when Jesus comes back, 
will be raptured with them. They'll be changed. The Bible says in a moment, in the twinkle of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. You understand what's happening here? Suddenly, God is fixing to, uh, to fulfill prophecies that speak of this mystery that the Apostle Paul talks about, inspired of the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51. You can read that for yourself. Whenever suddenly there'll be this resurrection, those in the grave, they will be changed and brought up out of the grave. Their soul's already with Jesus. The moment you die, we immediately leave our bodies. The body of death is laid in a casket or whatever happens to the body. The spirit leaves. When you take your last breath on earth, you take your next breath in heaven. And so the spirit of God, whenever, he, whenever we die, the, our life, our, our, our soul, is taken to heaven to be with God immediately. We don't believe in soul sleeping. The Bible don't teach soul sleeping. When it says talking about sleeping in Jesus, it's talking about you, your body is dead, but your soul is with God, you see? And so what happens is on the resurrection morning, whenever Jesus comes back to get us, those of us who have already died in the faith will be resurrected from the grave our body will be changed. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the, the corruptible shall put on incorruption. That means that which is able to decay and, and wear out. You know, the corruptible shall put on incorruption. Listen, the mortal shall put on immortality. You know what that means? It means mortal, that which is able to die, will put on immortality, that which is not able to ever die again. Isn't that great? So whenever we're resurrected from the grave, our bodies are brought back from the grave, the Bible teaches that we will never wear out, we'll never grow old, and we will never die again. We'll be with God in heaven forever and ever. And that's the day we're looking for, is that resurrection day when Jesus comes back and it happens at the next thing on the spiritual calendar. It happens that Jesus, the Lord himself, shall descend from heaven with a shout. See, that's what it's talking about in Thessalonians chapter 4. He descends from heaven with a shout, with the voice of our archangel, with the trump of God, and listen, and the dead in Christ shall arise first, listen, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, so suddenly now all of our loved ones and friends that are Christians, all the Christians ever before, all the way back, will all be resurrected, raised from the dead. Jesus will meet us there in the clouds and we'll all be together with Jesus in the clouds. And the Bible says he'll take us on to glory from there. It is our blessed hope of the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's going to be a wonderful time. That is the rapture of the church. Whenever we come up out of those graves or, or we blast off from this earth, I like to say it like this. When Jesus comes and we're raptured, man, we're going we're gonna to skin out of here like a bunch of holy astronauts. Gravity will, will uh, be suspended and we will launch out of here and we'll go to be with God. It's going to be beautiful. And when we get there, man, I'm telling you what's the truth. Can you imagine what it's going to be like to see all your Christian loved ones and friends and people you never met before who have loved Jesus. Many have died for the cause of Christ. And there in heaven, we will be with God. And the Bible teaches what happens is there's going to be this, uh, we're going to leave the earth and there's going to be a seven-year period of tribulation. It is like hell on earth. It is God unleashes his wrath and lets it just go. He pulls back and allows Satan to do his mess on this earth. And those unbelievers, the ungodly, many of them will comment on this very video and talk about how ridiculous this is and call it fairy tales and do all that nonsense. But those folks are going to face the wrath of God. And we'll be Seven years, that's how long that tribulation period is. It's seven years. And we will be in heaven with God for seven years of exaltation. We will be exalting Jesus Christ. And we will be saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, you're holy. We're not worthy. You're worthy. And we're praising the Lord for what he's done in our life. The things we will see during that time will be bigger than anything you've ever imagined. We can't even think about how great it's going to be. We cannot imagine what we're going to see. 
But in heaven, there'll be seven years of exaltation. On earth, there'll be seven years of tribulation. It's going to be horrible for those who get left behind. Let me just say this real quick because I'm not done. i got a lot of important points to hit for you here. But if you've not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are treading on thin ice and you are really in trouble. Right now, you can turn to God. You can realize your lostness. You can realize your sin. And you can turn to God and say, My God, have mercy on my soul. You can, you can turn to Him and say, Lord Jesus, I pray you'll forgive me and come into my heart and save me. My God, I want to follow you for the rest of my life. And you surrender your soul and your will to God. You can do it right now. If it's real and you mean it and you cast your faith on Him, He'll save your soul just like He saved the soul of a thief on a cross whenever you accept Him by faith. Jesus will save your soul. Now, let's move on. So, once we're raptured, we go through seven years, tribulation on earth, exaltation in heaven, but then there's coming that beautiful day, man, when we now come to the second coming of Jesus Christ, and that is when we will sa literally saddle up with Jesus. Now, I want you to know, that part I'm pretty excited about. We're going to saddle up with Jesus on white horses. Read in Revelation chapter 19. You can see this. And we will come back from heaven to earth, saddled on white horses, riding in with Jesus Christ. If you've got no riding ability, it don't matter because he's going he's to have horses that will take care of you and you're going to know how to ride. It's going to be a glorious time. And we're going to come riding back into this earth. I remember one time preaching at a rodeo. And uh, it, was a, it wasn't a Christian rodeo. And they asked me to come out and speak. And so I said, I'll do it. And so they let me go. Man, I started out there and I realized the oppression that a lot of people there, they paid good money to be at that rodeo. And I'm fixing to preach the gospel in the middle of this rodeo. You can imagine. And so I, I'm on my way out there and it's like I'm saying, God, I just, I need, and I, I knelt down by the fence before I went out. And I said, God, you got to help me. I, they ain't receptive. Help me with this. And, and God gave it to me right there on my knees. I jumped up. I run out in the middle of that arena. And I stood there in the, the stadium up there, bunches of people, and I just preached the gospel. Here's what I started out with. How many of you believe there'll be horses in heaven? And, of course, they all came alive. Yeah, there's horses in heaven. And I told them the story about the second coming of Jesus Christ that I'm telling you now, that there's coming a day when those of us who have put our faith in Jesus Christ are going to come back from heaven on white horses. That rodeo crowd cheered. They loved that part. And they're going to come back from heaven on white horses and where Jesus is going to be leading the pack and we're coming back to take over on earth. Jesus Christ, there he will rope the devil and put him in the pit. He'll be in the pit for a thousand years in, in uh, bondage. And he, Jesus will take over on this earth. Literally, this earth. You can read about it there in Revelation chapter 19 and following. And so he'll take hold of the devil and he'll put him away and, and he doesn't kill them. He just puts them away for a thousand years. But on that, during that thousand year time, those who are Christians will reign on this earth and Jesus will be king. Do you realize right now is the time that God has allowed Satan to have his run? And I believe, I don't know, I assume, I'm just thinking, you don't have to take this as doctrine, but I'm thinking, why is there so much sickness and sorrow? Why is there so much crime and, and horror? Why is it that there's so many ungodly things happen. Why don't God do something? He's doing something. You know what he's doing? I think, I, I believe that he's letting the world see, letting all humanity see what it looks like when Satan has the rule and reign, when he can run the show. And we see all the little children dying. We see people suffering. We see people being raped and being terrorized. We see all the horrors of this land. I believe God's allowing that time for us to see it and then when we come, when Jesus comes back and we come with him, when we take over, he's going to give us a thousand years to see what it's like when Jesus is in charge. And Jesus is going to rule this earth with an iron fist. He's taking over. And he is not going to allow anybody out of line. He's taking over. And for a thousand years, we will rule and reign with Jesus Christ. This is on the... This is on the eschatological calendar. This is, this is the rapture of the church, the next step, the seven-year tribulation. After the seven years, in comes Jesus with his bride. That's the church. That's the believers of Jesus. And we're all coming back to this earth to take over. And the Bible talks about how the Christians are going to rule. We're going to be in leadership position as judges and rulers on this earth. And, and it's going to be an incredible thing. Now, after a thousand years, this is one of the points that I'm not wild about, but it's true in the Bible. After a thousand years, 
Jesus lets Satan out of his prison. Satan comes back. He rallies up his, his masses, those who would follow him. And he comes against the city of God. And he comes against God. And Jesus steps out there. It's a funny thing. We're riding with him. And, and, and we're following him. We're on the horses. We're doing all that. But the Bible teaches that we don't, we don't even raise a sword. We don't fight at all during that time. Whenever Jesus comes, it's a fight between Satan and Jesus. And, and we don't even fight because immediately Jesus steps out. He calls down fire from heaven and he blasts the devil into hell and takes all of his followers and he throws them in hell as well. And then there is the great white throne judgment. Now the great white throne judgment is not where the Christians will be judged. They're judged at the Bema seat of Christ. The Bible speaks about that in earlier chapters, but or actually earlier book in the book of uh, Corinthians and Romans. Uh, he speaks about the Bema seat of Christ where we will receive our rewards for things we have done and we'll suffer loss for things we could have done we didn't do as Christians. But we won't be judged for our sin because that judgment was on Jesus Christ on the cross. Everybody, everybody who believes in Jesus, put their faith in him. All your sins are on the cross and all the punishment that would come to you is on Jesus Christ. So you're not going to be punished for your sin but you're going to receive rewards for what you did right and you're going to suffer loss for what you did wrong and then we go to heaven to be with God forever. That's what that's about. Don't let me confuse you. I've got to get back on a task. The great white throne judgment, Revelation chapter 20. You can read it from verse 11 through 15. And he talks about this great white throne and him who sat on it from whose face the heaven and the earth fled away. You know what it means? When Jesus takes the throne, heaven and earth are dissolved. They vanish away and now everything is central right here at this great white throne. And at this time, it is going to be so. It is going to be. It's going to be so uh, intense, because he he talks about how uh, that the lost people will be. They'll have their own rapture. They'll have their own resurrection, and they'll be brought from the dead and brought up before the judgment of God. And only Christ, only lost people will be judged at this great white throne. They'll be brought up. They'll be tried for saying that they could do it on their own. They would not accept Jesus Christ. They ridiculed Christians. They, they decided, we're not following God. I don't believe in your fairy tale God. And they'll be brought up before God. And the Bible says, whosoever name was not written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And so the, the, the point is, now's the time of salvation. Now's the time to get everything right. Don't miss this. God wants to do a salvation work in your life. And you can follow him. But then the Bible goes on and talks about heaven. And then you read uh, Revelation chapter 21, and it speaks about the glories of heaven. Christians, listen, y'all do yourself a favor and sit down and just read Revelation chapter 21 tonight. Just sit down and read it and enjoy what God's got in store for us. Is Jesus coming again? Absolutely he's coming again. When is he coming? We don't know, but he knows. All we know is Jesus is coming again. My dear friends, we have this wonderful hope in Jesus Christ, and he's going to do what he said he's going to do. And he's taken over, and we're going to be with him. And all those naysayers out there who have always talked, cursed against God, they're going to have their day in court. And they ain't going to have nothing to stand on. And they're going to be bound hand and foot and cast into the lake of fire. And some people say, how wicked is that? How wicked was it that Jesus would take all of our sins upon himself and die in our place that we might be saved. All the wickedness that we had, we piled on him. Actually, he did it on purpose. He took our sins upon himself because he loves us and he wants to save us. What more could we ask for? What do you want to do? Sin all you want to and think everything's going to be okay? No, what you do is you stop and say, I'm wrong. I'm guilty before God and I give my life to Jesus Christ. And right here, right now, swim, sink, live or die, I'm following Jesus. And you put your faith in him and his sacrifice to wash your sins away. And he'll wash all your sins away. And though they be black as tar, he'll make it white as snow and make you ready to meet the Savior in the air one of these days. Come on, y'all. Let's follow Jesus.